What's up guys, Nathaniel here, coming to you today with the question of the day. Um, the question comes from Verdiana in Dallas, Texas, and her question is, how do y'all feel about abstinence before marriage? Well, before I give you my answer and my opinion, I want to address a few things. Number one, being that it is extremely difficult to remain sexually abstinent. Extremely difficult. And number two is that any healthy adult strongly desires to be sexual. So those being rather obvious I think are still important to highlight because of what it does to us. Anytime you have that combination of something that you really want and something that um, is extremely, to, extremely difficult to refrain from, your mind will, you're creating a scenario for your mind to be flooded with rationalizations left and right of why it's okay to do what, whatever it is. Um, so when it, in regards to sexuality, before I give you my answer and opinion on what I think, I want to give you some rationalizations that come to my mind when revolved around the topic of being sexual. Um, number one, well, number one thing my mind comes up with is that it's in my nature. It's natural for me to be sexual. It's why I was one of the reasons I was created to reproduce. And so, should I give my body what it wants? You know, obviously, I'm, my body wants to be uh, sexual, and I'm not giving it. Um, that's one thing. Another thing my mind comes up with is that if I love the girl, if I love whoever I'm being, whoever I'm in a relationship, then it's okay to be sexual with her because I'm not just trying to manipulate her and get something out of her, but I actually care for her. Um, something else my mind tells me is that it's, um, oh, it's unhealthy to suppress sexual energy, right? So I'm a big advocate of expressing myself emotionally, physically, and so I come up with reasons like, oh man, I wonder if I'm, if I'm suppressing myself sexually, is this creating some sort of inner turmoil and manifesting itself in like physical ailments or is it creating some sort of imbalance in my body? Um, so those are three of the hundred rationalizations that my mind comes up with when uh, revolved around the idea of being sexual to tell me that it's okay to do. And if you'll be honest with yourself, um, you'll find that you come up with all sorts of reasons and rationalizations for anything that you really want and that it's difficult to not do. And sexual, being sexual is just one of those. Um, which brings me to the idea of, uh, of being sincere. So, uh, we as humans are expert rationalizers. Anytime we want something, uh, anytime we're doing something, most of the time you'll find that people believe what they're doing is in one way or the other good or they're doing the, they're making the right decision. Rarely do people do something uh, all-knowingly thinking that it's wrong as they're doing it. They have somehow in their mind, whether twisted or not, have convinced themselves that what they're doing is correct. Even horrific uh, acts such as suicide bombers they have convinced themselves that for the greater good that what they're doing is actually a, um, it's actually a good thing. So these are sincere, sincere people, they're just sincerely wrong. So I wanted to address the idea of being sincerely wrong. Is it, is it possible that, yeah, it feels good, uh, it sounds right, but it's just, uh, we're sincere, but it could be sincerely wrong. And obviously this can be flipped on any, now that I'm pointing this out, it could, uh, if you wanted to, you could flip it on what I'm saying and say, well, what I believe could be sincerely wrong as well. So what, the reason um, I mention that is because it brings me to my answer. And my answer is rooted in a quote that, I, that is in the book of Jeremiah in the Bible. And it, and it says that the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. So from my experience in life, I have realized that this is true. That my heart <laughs> will deceive me. It's just a matter of time that I'm going to be doing something that I think is right, but in all objectivity that it's wrong. For example, um, I have, con I have convinced myself that it was right to um, put dead animals in people's mailboxes. 
I've rationalized that it's okay to lie, that it's okay to steal. I've rationalized that it was okay to hit my sister in the face with a tennis racket because I was angry at her. These are all things that are objectively wrong in most people's eyes, but at the, in the moment, my heart was deceptive. It told me that it was the right thing to do, but it was not. Um, so the point is being is that I need a guide. I need a, I need a one whose ways are higher than my ways, but has my best interest in mind. I, I, I really need that because if I rely on my own understanding and my own desires in my heart, then it's going to lead me astray. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the way, in the end, it leads to destruction. Um, so, my answer is yes. I believe in sexual abstinence before marriage. I'm actually a virgin. Uh, many of you may not know that or may not believe that. Um, even though I've never had sexual intercourse, I ha I've been sexual with one other girl. Uh, it was, I was in a four-year relationship. And uh, yes, it took everything in me to remain sexually pure throughout those years. But I did. I did. And uh, I did, we did not have sex. And, um, and I'm very glad that we didn't because in the moment, in the time, I thought I was going to marry this girl. I loved her. Um, but in the end, I didn't. And so basically, I just want to give you a quick rundown of some of things that I have experienced through being sexually abstinent. One is that it has created immense amounts of self-discipline. That it, it takes so much, uh, so much effort and so much self-discipline to, to not be sexual. Um, I'm speaking for the guys here. I, I think girls experience similar things, but man, uh, a male such as myself, there is nothing more that I want at times to just absolutely destroy a girl. And um, so it, it has developed so much self-discipline within me to not, to not act on those feelings. Um, another thing is that I admire girls uh, with more respect and not seeing them as just a means to an end. Uh, you know, being nice to them, uh, getting them to be receptive towards me, making them laugh, feel comforted around me just so I can have sex with them. You know, that's not how my mind works now. My mind works in a way that... I, uh, it allows me to know if I really like this girl. Do I really like spending time around this girl uh, and not being sexual? And does she really enjoy being with me, not being blindsided of, uh, by the fact that we're just using each other for our, um, our uh, pleasure, you know? Um, when you're being sexual with someone, of course you're gonna, uh, you might be tended to like someone that you are, uh, uh, that's giving you orgasms and that you have became sexually addicted to. But erasing all of that from the picture, you now uh, open the opportunity to see if you guys really enjoy being in each other's company uh, without uh, the, just a means to an end of being sexual with one another. Um, so those are some awesome benefits that I have experienced through remaining sexually abstinent. And my perspective is that I believe God has my best interest in mind. I believe that um, even His ways are not are not my ways, but they are above my ways, and I trust Him that that by remaining sexually abstinent until married, that it is going. It's not keeping me from something. It's not. I'm not missing out on something, but it's actually preserving uh, something much better and something much more powerful and amazing in the end. So I, I hold on to that. I trust in that because I believe and have faith in God that He has my best interests in mind. Um, so also a few things I want to mention is that my desire is to marry a virgin. I know that I, I hold so much value to that, that uh, my future wife, I would like her to be a virgin. And this is obviously, it's not a deal breaker if I fall in love with someone and they're not a virgin and I'm like, oh, sorry, I can't marry you, you have, you've had sex with, it's not like that, but I do, I do desire for my future wife to be a virgin, and, um, and, if I, and I, I'm a big believer in becoming the person you are looking for, is looking for, so if I'm looking for someone that uh, has this quality, then I myself want to become that. And, um, <clears throat> oh yeah, and if, for those of you who think being inexperienced is unattractive, um, I think the complete opposite. When I come across a girl who has not been experienced to sex, uh, her sexuality and is kind of clueless in the realm, 
it, to me, that is so attractive. And uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there. And another thing is um, that I wanted to mention is that giving into temptation does not satisfy your craving, but it only makes your appetite bigger and easier to give in the second time. And that relates to sex, that relates to all areas of life that you were tempted. Uh, when you were tempted and trialed, when giving into that, it doesn't satisfy you. It's just a temporal happiness that just dissipates real quickly and you'll find yourself with a stronger craving for it and a easier to give in. Um, and I just want to make it clear that this is my personal opinion. This is my personal experience, not necessarily what my brothers think. They may have similar trains of thought, but not necessarily what they believe. Uh, so I just want to make that clear. And that's my answer. Um, yeah, this is a new series that we're started about Ask Us Anything. So leave a comment in the uh, section below or leave us a comment on our Facebook page, Rob Ross slash Facebook, I mean Facebook.com slash Rob Ross, leave us a comment there. Ask us any question. We're going to be answering questions uh, most days of the week for the next few months. So bring it to us.